What's up, Lulu? What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Get in there. Yeah, you hungry? Pixie! Crazy dog. There you go. Hey, hey, there you go. All right, good morning, everybody. This is Patrick, Alabama Burning. Got the dogs fed and we are about to start working on some art. I've got a yellowfin tuna to start off with and I'm gonna bring you guys along so you can see how I do it. Today we're gonna be working on a yellowfin tuna. This is for a fishing tournament. It's the, got about 20 different pieces to make, but this one is for, the Northeast Florida Marlin Association. It's the Game Fish Club in Northeast Florida. So this one is a year, I think it's a year round uh, tournament. And uh, got a little plaque here. It's gonna go right here. Once it's all finished, it's finished up, gets the full epoxy resin. I like it when the tournament's in the plaques they look they look more legit than without but um yeah this is just gonna be yellow fin tuna uh this is gonna have full color so i'm gonna come in with some paints and watercolors give it some real color come in with the glitter on top and uh carve it up a little bit but uh yeah come along i'll show you how to do it it's gonna be a fun all right starting off with the big torch I'm going to do the edges, blacking everything in. That can is empty. using the spatula as a guide as you can see here in my close-up camera get that mouth out of the way there we go All I'm doing when I start, I'm just getting my hard lines out of the way. Once my lines are done, I've got the nice dark colors that I want. I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna shade. It's the same process for every fish. If you're doing something that's not fish, it might be a little different, but it's just how I do it. There's no right way to do it. If you have a better way or something you like, just do it that way. Whatever makes you feel comfortable.
Same thing right here with the fins. Taking my spatula, I'm guiding the heat as we go up. Now each little fin will have its own little lines along with the gill plate. Hopefully you can see that pretty good. Hope my big hand don't get in the way. Nice and easy. All right, so I've got most of my hard lines done. Um, so what I wanna show you guys right here is, I'm gonna come through and add this shade, and I call it tunneling. Um, if you look right here, that's where the flame comes out. The flame is hollow in the center. So there's a blue flame coming out in the center, it's like a cone, so it's hollow. When you get that point, really close to the wood it only burns the outside edge so it'll put like a dot i can show you guys real quick what the dot will look like let me see what i'm talking about right here come on go close now it's hollow see that see that all right so when i come in on this area i'm going to add the tunnel which is the hollow area of the flame. It's something that took me a long time to figure out. Nobody told me this. This is just a technique that I picked up. Um, it, it, it can be a pain, so if you don't feel comfortable doing it, don't do it, just add the regular shade. But you can get a really cool effect. Adding this like little squiggle tunnel to the tuna. And I think it just looks better than regular shading. It's like, it just adds this real underwater look to it. Real wavy, real neat look. And I do the same thing coming up the body, just to give it real subtle, real subtle tunneling. Tunneling, tubing. Personally, I think it looks pretty cool, but you know, there's no right way to do any of this. Some shade. All right, so here's another point. Um, right underneath this fin, uh, how big the yellowfin tune is fin is right here it's it, it's good to make it come alive by adding a little shadow so you got to do it real quick um, once again if you don't feel comfortable you don't have to do it it's just something I like to do but you just add a little shadow to the fin just lightly 
ever so lightly touch that. And this isn't tunneling, this is just, just light shading. I always think that makes it come alive. A little more, a little more depth to it. All right, now, break out the big one. Do some quick shading. shading your hard lines done once again I move pretty quick you do not have to now I'm gonna break out the razor tip p80 this gets really hot as you can tell it's at 650 it goes up to 800 it's really hot I'm just gonna come in add a few lines close some things off just a little extra detail of course, I like doing the eye with this. Um, like I say in all my videos, you can pick up a cheap one for about fifteen to twenty dollars at any craft store. I always do my eye last. Grandmother always taught me focus on the way the fish, or way the, the art looks before you do the eye. The eye will give it life at the end. It's almost like waking it up. Gotta wake the fish up. That goes for any wildlife always. Comment below and tell me uh, who got you into art. For me, it was my grandparents on both sides. They really got me started at a young age. And it just never stopped. Except for in my 20s. A bit of a party phase. long line once again take your time when doing this I, I do it really quick I've been doing it for a long time a piece like this used to take me all day now I'm gonna have it done in about an hour all right so from here we're gonna move on to watercolor I'm gonna come in add some color to it and then after that we'll break out the Dremel and finish up with some of the carving um, color is really fun I always do my color second if I'm going to add some watercolors to it and then the glitter will come after but it's 
Burn, watercolor, Dremel, glitter. That's how I do it. All right, so we're back ready for painting. Um, for those of you who care, um, I've got a Royal and Lang Nickel brush. Um, it's just synthetic. Nothing crazy. This is all cheap stuff. Uh, Windsor & Newton watercolor paints. I don't know what this is. They're just watercolor paints. I always say keep it simple. It's wood. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're not painting on paper. Uh, it's going to tear the brush up pretty quick anyways. Um, so yeah, so let's get started uh, painting this up. I'm going to start off with uh, some blue. I don't know what kind of blue this is. It's just the blue that I like. I'm not real sure what the actual name is. You can do it however you like. There's no right way of doing it. Just use what you like. Start up top. Add some blue right here. Yeah, that wood really soaks it up real quick. So you gotta kind of work fast so you don't leave some weird lines in there with the paint. Again, you don't have to do it like me. I'm gonna throw this video into a time lapse. And you'll get the basic idea of what I do, what colors I use. Lots of blues and yellows. Again, you can do it however you want. You can do a pink and purple tuna. It does not matter. Pink and purple tuna actually sounds kind of cool. So if you want to see me do a pink and purple tuna, comment below. <laughs> if we can get this video up to, I don't know. I don't have many subscribers. Let's just say, if we can get this video up to a thousand likes, I'll do a pink and purple tuna. I think that'd be pretty cool. And then, actually, in a later video, I'll give it away. That'd be cool. I don't know anybody who wants a pink and purple tuna. I know I want to see it now that I said it. watercolor we're gonna come through with the Dremel and uh, add some harder lines make it pop a little more um, this is the small Dremel 808 um, they make one that's battery powered that's a little smaller but I think this is the smallest one you can get that you plug into a wall um, I just use a small little bit there a little round bit that uh, carves it out once again you don't have to do this it's just what I do Get going. Well, we gotta plug it in first. That might help. There we go. Now we got our Dremel lines done. Um, looking a little better. Let's see, we're gonna go with the uh, Glitterific Gold for some of the yellow areas. And then I've got a, pack out. 
little blue areas we're gonna go, the darker areas, we're gonna go with the deep blue glitterific. Um, as you already know, just keep it easy breezy, nice and simple, it's nothing crazy. You don't have to be a painter to slap on some glitter. I like adding this glitter to it because it just makes it, you know, makes it sparkle, makes it kind of look like it's underwater a little bit. It really brightens the fish up. When you walk by the fish, once the uh, two-part epoxy resin is on it and it's completely finished, it kind of sparkles as you move past it. It's really cool. Um, those are, that's just kind of something I can't really show very well you have to see it in person I always tell people and get told that they just look so much better in person it's just hard to show on camera even with a video kind of difficult I'm gonna go with the blue I'm gonna come up top here just darken this light it up I know on camera when I'm putting this stuff on, it just looks bright. It doesn't look you know, like it will when it's done, but in person, I can tell you, it looks amazing. I'm just kind of spreading it out. Nothing real crazy. Just keeping it simple. So now what we got left is the eye. Once again, nothing special. Nothing special. This is some Grumbacher, just white acrylic, cheap paintbrush that's all dried up and nasty. A little dab will do it. Just add a little highlight to this eye. Brings that fish to life. So at this point, since it's a trophy, I grabbed my placard. Uh, it's the Northeast Florida Marlin Association Game Fish Club. This would be first place yellowfin tuna. Shout out to Power Play, Captain Bo Baker, Captain Brian Scallion. That's pretty cool. Um, I think Power Play won a bunch of these trophies. It must be a, one hell of a fishing team. So I take the let's see little sticky thing off right here. These plaques were supposed to be a little bit bigger, but since it's so time sensitive, we're just gonna go with it. Hit the center. Make sure everything's nice and square. Attach it right here. All right. And next comes resin. And I'll show a little video for that too. That in there, I'll show you how to do my epoxy resin. That's pretty cool. Shout out Power Play, first place yellowfin tuna. All right, guys, 
I know this is a little awkward. I've got my mask down right now, but uh, I don't like smelling this stuff. It stinks. I don't know what it's doing to me. It's chemical. Uh, I've got my super clear uh, A, super clear B. You mix this resin 50 50. Uh, I use a drill and let me show you a drill and a paint mixer. Spin it up, do it for 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes. This resin right here is ready to go. You can tell I pour a lot at a time. I've got, I think, nine, eight or nine pieces on the table right now. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. We'll pour the resin, spread it out, and then I'll show you what it looks like in the morning. It'll be all done, nice and shiny. All right, y'all, I got my gloves on. I got my resin. I'm ready to pour. Now we got the resin poured on the yellowfin tuna, along with all these other ones, but we're focusing on the yellowfin tuna right now. We're gonna spread it out, and then we're gonna come in with some uh, another the torch, and we're gonna pop all the bubbles out of it. It has to set for 24 hours before you can pick them up. Um, this stuff is expensive, so I gotta get it spread out fast. Hey guys, it's the next day. Um, I went ahead and poured my epoxy on the yellowfin tuna. It's pretty much set. We've had pretty cold weather, so it takes a little bit longer for the epoxy to fully set, so I'm gonna leave it on the table for a while. Um, I wanted to show you guys exactly how it turned out. Uh, so check it Here out. Here go, the elephant tuna. You see that epoxy just really makes everything come to life. Beautiful shine. Got your plate here. Couldn't ask for it to come out any better. So, if you have any questions about how to pour epoxy, I tried to cover it the best I could. Um, comment below, I'll try and answer everybody's questions. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the Elephant Tuna Trophy. Uh, I've got a bunch more that I'll be releasing uh, in the next few days or weeks. Uh, these have got to be shipped out pretty soon, so I'll be kind of busy. If you like these kind of videos, let me know. Give me a like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, I'll be on to the next one. See you guys in the next video.